pronounced red. <laughs> it's staying. Good. This is all very complicated. I'm getting What does red mean? Usually on these cameras, green is I'm ready and red means I'm recording. Oh. And now it's staying on red. But I can't read the buttons because I can't get anywhere near it unless I take it off of that little bracket. And then that means that somebody has to get it back on the bracket. <laughs> and of course, this thing's in the way. Well, I suppose we could turn it so that we could read it. But nah. Did you need the microphone? I, I set it up on
Uh, what was it that, uh, where's the, uh, oh, there he is. No, he's not. I lost him. Al, where are you? Raise your hand. There you are. Quick, oh, that's why. Little bit. Yeah, you're in How many years did you say? Two hundred and forty-six. Yeah, two hundred and forty-six. We were talking about that earlier, and he agreed that that's how old he is. <laughs> that's how long we've been a nation. Praise God for the fact that we've been here that long. Amen. Well, let us stand for the opening prayer. Heavenly Father, we praise you for your grace that saves and sustains us. We praise you for our tender mercies to forgive us of our sins. We praise you for your faithfulness to keep your promises, to provide for our needs. We praise you for who you are now and forever. We lay our lives on your altar of dedication as we worship your holy name. Bless us, spread the gospel and shed the light of your holy word to the world in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
most merciful God, we confess we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives all of us our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Isaiah the 66th chapter rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her all you who love her rejoice with her in joy all who you mourn over her that you may nurse and be satisfied for her consoling breast that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious abundance for thus says the Lord behold I will extend peace to her like a river and the glory of the nations like an overflowing stream. And you shall nurse, and you shall be carried upon her hip, and bounced upon her knees. As one whom his mother comforts, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall see, and your heart shall rejoice. Your bones shall flourish like the grass and the hand of the, of, and, and of the hand. Lord shall be known to his servants, and he shall show his indignation against his enemies. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. This reading is from the book of Psalms, the 66th Psalm, to be read responsibly. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. How awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies come cringing to you. All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what, the God, what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds towards the, cho towards the children of man. He turned the sea into dry land. They passed through the river on foot. They are going to be rejoicing. Who rules by his might forever, whose eyes keep watch on the nations, let not the rebellious exalt themselves. Bless our God, O peoples, let the sound of his praise be heard. Who has kept your soul among the living and has not let your feet slip, here ends the reading. Please rise if you are able for the reading of the gospel. Today's reading comes to us from St. Luke chapter 10, starting at verse 1. After the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him, two by two, into every town and place where he himself was about to go. And he said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the <coughs> me, harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. 
Go your way. Behold, I am sending you out as lambs in the midst of wolves. <clears throat> Carry no money bag, no knapsack, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. But if not, it will return to you and remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide. For the laborer deserves his wages. Do not go from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and they receive you, eat what is set before you. Heal the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town that do not receive you, go into the streets and say, Even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near. The one who hears you hears me, and the one who rejects you rejects me, and the one who rejects me rejects him who sent me. The seventy-two returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your name are written in heaven. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We we'll continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. some of the passages of scripture, I think they raise more questions as you go. I know they do me, but I'm easily confused. But today we start out with a connecting phrase. It says, after these things, after what things? What are we talking about? Well, we're in verse or chapter 10. We have to step back to chapter 9. Chapter 9, we have the same scenario, only instead of 70 people going out, we only have 12. So chapter 9 says, when Jesus had called the 12 together, he gave them power and authority to drive out all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. He told them, take nothing for your journey, no staff, no bag, no bread, no money, no extra shirt. Whatever house you enter, stay there until you leave that town. If people do not welcome you, leave their town and shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. So they set out and went from village to village proclaiming the good news and healing people everywhere. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Kind of what St. Luke was telling us earlier, or today. 70 people are being sent out into the community. And you have to think about this. The mission, what's the mission of the 70? Well, it's kind of the same as the 12. Okay? Jesus is making, or is preparing to make his last journey to Jerusalem. 
For some of these people, this is the first time he's visited them, and for some of them, and for all of them, actually, it'll be the last time. He organizes this ministry, or this mission of 70, in addition to that 12 already before. They are the forerunners going ahead to the different cities to study and to, to study, to present the gospel and to teach people and help them with their diseases. That was their mission. And I really think it's kind of crazy. Well, that's kind of crazy. Wow. We got 30, 35 groups, or 75, 70, 2 by 2, which equals 35. Okay? At 35 different directions these men are going in. Now you think about, they were going out to add to the disciples. So you get one disciple, you get another, and then those two get another, and so on and so forth. I mean, it gets huge when you think what 35 men can do in preaching the gospel. Of course, I know in our world today we have, what, five billion? So it would take them a couple of weeks. <laughs> Limited number of harvesters, laborers. <coughs> when you consider in our world today, one of the things that we look at at least those of us who have jobs. I don't want to have four or five others trying to do my job. So am I going to go out and seek somebody to help me? Probably not. Okay, but in this case, that's not true of the church. To reach out and harvest for the church, you want more, not focus less. So these 30... Now, 35 groups, I get that stuck in my head. These 70 men are going to do just that. They're going to go out and do a harvest attempt more and more as they can. We want it to be explosive in generating and harvesting for new followers of God. Well, Chapter, or back in, back in 10, verse 3. It's, it's interesting, when I say a thing, it's funny. I look at some of this stuff and I'm going, really? Because here we are, we're going to send you out among wolves. Gee, thanks. Okay? And not only is Jesus going to send them out with wolves, in the wolves, they're going to do it without guns, knives, spears, food, clothes, Interesting, unarmed, unprotected. They're to go out and preach the gospel. It's funny, one of the many people that I read for this particular scripture today, he talked about going without taking anything with you. And one man named Plumtree says it's useless baggage. Okay? And that's because of their focus. If you focus on what you need, rather than focus on the mission, you'll lose track of the mission. He even said, when you go out, salute no man by the way. I thought that was a great different text, because ours says that instead of... Greet no one on the road. Now, if we're going to go out and preach, we're going to teach the word, how come we don't want to talk to anybody? Well, in the classical Greek, when they meet each other, you know, it kind of reminds me of some of the younger folks back in the day when they know, by the time they get through that with 20 or 30 people, half the day's gone. So, don't do that. Get on to your mission. 
He said that when you enter a house like this, peace be with, or peace be to this house. Now, what's interesting, those words were used in England at the Church England office in order to enter in someone's home that is sick. So, peace be to this house. It's a lot of the physical maladies of folks, they would go in and pray for them. So this, this verbiage here is actually used hundreds of years later in entering the homes of the sick. And then he goes on to say, and if a son of peace is there, your peace will rest upon him. Son of peace. This is a Hebrew, also known as Aramaic, expression. The language being purely Greek shows on the basis of St. Luke's narrative was how they determined a, an Aramaic document of granting or giving peace to a home. And the son of peace was the one who was the head of the house. Hanging up on my cookie. So they go in, remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they provide, what they provide. And the laborer deserves his wages. What are the wages of these men? Sharing the gospel. And he goes up, the laborer is worthy of his hire. So what is that hire? What is he being worthy of? Well, first of all, he's being worthy in the fact that he's teaching something that they don't know and blessing that household for that of which God has given them to bless. I think if we were to think about the... Totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> but when we're given... Giving are due. God, if we were to be the judge, would find us unworthy. But God does not find us unworthy. He says that whatever we do in his name means that we deserve that of which we are due, which in this case is food, shelter, Going back to leaving where they were to go into these homes, they carried nothing with them. So their worthiness, coming from God, the due is provided by those they visit. Well, our Lord has told us in the past, in our scripture, that the humblest service done in a true and loyal spirit shall be rewarded. That's what we're talking about here, about the due. And that was told back in Matthew. <coughs> that the reward we shall hereafter receive will be in proportion to the fidelity of our service. I like that fidelity of our service. When we go and honor others, or I should say honor God to others, it's from here. It's from the heart. Fidelity of our service. Our tone and our spirit would be that of men who are conscious that they don't really deserve anything and yet are being given their due because of what they're doing for God. Some towns and villages, we know, even, even the 12 and the 70, were received greatly. Wonderful, we're glad you're here. Come on down. And yet others, they're repelled. They're snubbed. They're sneered at. They're the ones that 
these apostles and these 70 are to shake off their shoes and say, you're not worthy of my time, nor are you worthy of God's watch. Although God still loves them, we never miss that. God loves everybody regardless. But the villages were unworthy of their presence. Well, I'm thinking about all the things that they've done here in this text. But I like the pack where they, they come back and they're just, wow, they're excited. I'd be pretty excited too. But there was one text I was looking at which really made sense. You know when you're, you're in school, remember when we were in school? Vaguely. <laughs> well, you know, after a great, wonderful victory of football, I was one of the bench warmers, but in the football, you know, they come back, wow, we won, we're great, we are so good, <laughs> right? Pat me on the back, I'm great, and of course the great quarterback and all of that other kind of nonsense. And Jesus says, it's okay to be excited. It's okay that you've done these things. I saw Satan fall like lightning. Yes, whoopee, way to go. But let's not get so full of ourselves. Okay? We are great. We are wonderful. Do not rejoice in this, he says in our passage, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your name is in heaven. Man, that is the greatest gift we could have any time. No matter what we do, no matter great we are, we have to remember who's really doing all of this. It's God. God is doing these things. And because he's doing it using us and we're showing that fidelity of service from our heart. We're saying, okay, that's wonderful. Thank you, Jesus, that our names are now in heaven. They were given the opportunity. They grabbed it by the throat and made it worthy. Made themselves worthy. Made it so that their names will be in heaven. And I think when we look at all the things that we do in and out of church, the services rendered like by the 70 are only good as long as they last. Because eventually we're all going to walk that final road to home. And when we go home, we're going to be gloriously happy that our name precedes us. It's kind of like the guy at the airport holding the sign. Welcome, good and faithful service, servant. Our goal is the same as the 70. It's to have our names written in the book. That's exciting. That's the good news. That's what we need to aspire to in all that we do. Amen. Amen.
Consider the needs of our community, the needs of our church. Most, and most of all, we think about the community that you have provided for us. As we praise your name with these gifts, we ask that you use them and guide us that we use them in a way that pronounces the wonderfulness of you, your word, and your church. Amen. 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 Please be seated. No, I forgot On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took the bread. He broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then after the meal, after giving thanks, Jesus said, take this cup is the new covenant of my blood. It is poured out for forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. The table is set. Come and eat. Christ, bro. 
having shared the body and the blood of Christ, we remember that horrible day, but then we remember that he's going to return, and to that we are excited. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, for those of you who haven't heard, I don't know, you remember Jerry, you of course you remember Jerry Halverson, but his son, grandson. who was a, huh? Grandson. It does say grandson, thank you. <laughs> a little trombone here. <laughs> anyway, he has, he was in a bicycle accident yeah. with a car. Oh. He's now in a coma. Oh. He's a, a renowned violinist, if I'm not mistaken. Oh my yeah. God. Uh, let's see. Sorry, my eyes aren't focusing here. Someone has someone. Oh, the Austin Doors. I have a friend, Galen, terminal breast cancer. Mm. Wow, I'm thinking of, of Galen. Mm. To read some fun ones. This is a thanks to God from the uh, from Phil and, and Virginia Steves. Glad to see you here. Mm -hmm. uh, safe travels, and we'll be lifting up. Uh, we're thankful that Lydia got to Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I would say tough duty, but yeah. I understand she's having to clean, so I'm not so sure if she's having fun. But anyway, uh, a birth of another great grandson on the May twentieth. Wow, you guys aren't that old. <laughs> 61st wedding anniversary. Oh. Lovely. Oh. Who? Huh? Who was it? Bill in Virginia. Oh. Oh. Didn't I say that? Probably not. And a, another, a great granddaughter was born, a for, the first. My goodness. So we have Alexandra. Oh, that's our, sorry, never mind. So we have two. You have a great grandson and a great granddaughter, both born, one in May and one in June. How are they, And Alexandra is the one who was the nursery attendant here. Oh, oh. And she and her husband have a beautiful little baby girl oh. born June 25th, six hours after our 60th first anniversary. <laughs> How oh, wonderful. Goodness. That's great. Okay, I wonder, I wonder why the notation here of Alexandra, she was the former nursing woman, not nursing attendant here. Okay, no I was confused. Um, we have Mary Holmes. Husband Chuck passed away this weekend. Oh. So I don't know his age. This is from uh, uh, Tony and Linda. Is that the neighbor you were telling me about, Tony? Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, he's in the hands of the Lord now, so that's the upside. Mm -hmm. Well, let us pray for all things of the church. Heavenly Father, we first of all thank you for all the years we've had as a country. We've had many ups and downs and sideways and kicks and all the things that go on, but we're still here. And we thank and praise your holy name for that. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We lift to you the many that are in crisis. We have many who are sick. We have those who are dying in the Ukraine. We don't know what's going on in other areas of the world, but we know that it's not good. We lift all of those to you who are struggling, not only with those they've lost, but the situation that they're in. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. We lift to you the first responders. Once again, they're the ones that go into the breach while the rest of us stay on the sidelines. We can't thank them enough 
and praise you enough for them to have that gift. And we do that, Father, as we continue, and Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Father, when we get down to specifics, we lift to you uh, Jerry's son, who needs lots of healing, broken bones, comas, none of that are good. Father, we lift to you uh, Galen, who is now having brain cancer, that we remember them, and that we ask you to remember them and hold them tight. Father, we're, we give you a praise report, a thank you for the safe travels, not only for those coming here, but those that are going out where, uh, especially today on this 4th of uh, July weekend, as they get on the highways, that they stay safe and slow down. We also praise your wonderful gifts of children, a great-grandson, a great-granddaughter, how joyous the parents are for this, and the grandparents, and the great-grandparents, and the members of the church, as we are smiling ear to ear, knowing that these wonderful gifts are now in play. Father, we've lost another member of the fold. We lift to you the Chuck, who has passed into your hands, knowing that we can be joyous that he's in your hands and sad that he's no longer with us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Father, we have many things to pray for. It's one of those vigils that we could spend all day and all night and still not reach the end. And we can't do that. First of all, we can remember all their names. And second of all, it's because of, there are so many that only you can know and can care for them all. Father, we continue our week seeking your mercy on us. Your Holy Spirit to guide our steps to follow what it is your will is and not ours. And once again, we're joyously thankful for your presence and for your gift of your loving Son. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Amen. We also continue with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Heidi, you want to kick things off? She has an announcement. I think I can put my teacher voice on. It sounds like you can hear me. Um, I just wanted to let you know that Christian Education is looking for teachers for Sunday school for the fall. Oh. And we'd like everybody to consider it. And we need about seven to make sure that we have enough coverage so that everybody feels supported in their, in their work. So um, I consider teaching one of the great privileges. Um, <laughs> because you get to impact somebody's faith development. And I didn't grow up in a real church. I grew up in a family that was supposed to be going to church, but didn't go a lot of church. And so I find it really rewarding to be able to work with kids to do that. So I think that you would find it rewarding as well. I want you to think about it. The materials that you're given have, almost, have a script, basically. So if you want to go with an outline, you can go you know, smaller rather than larger. So I think you will have all the things that you need, plus all of us praying for you for your success. And the Lord will be right there with you as well as somebody from, you know, so there it will be a second person in the room with you. 
Um, and we're thinking seven people or teams of people. And um, so, and if, if I have to come back and ask for more, more assistance, I'll get more creative. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe not, yes? Question. Oh, Is it so that they can alternate? Yes. <coughs> Exactly, exactly, because it was really, um, I think, I've been in the situation where you were on duty every single week, and it is a harder gig, right? It's a harder gig. So I think that um, uh, there's something to be said to being able to look forward to every single time you teach. And the other thing is that sometimes if you were to have a week where, let's say, let's say you didn't have any students that week. Well, then you keep your stuff, and the next time your name is up, well, then you're going to present then. And so it's never like you have a wasted uh, effort because you'll have that opportunity to present that lesson later. And I, I learn something every single time I teach. And I'm teaching, I usually teach the, um, uh, you know, like three, uh, third graders or so. And that's not my daily gig, right? My daily gig is ninth grade. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I find it incredibly rewarding. I think you should really pray over it and think about it. Cause, and if you've ever done it, I think you should think about it, you know, super hard. Right? Yeah, they should think about it super hard because um, it is a tremendous um, up. You know, it's a tremendous up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. When is Sunday school? Is it, uh, it starts after Labor Day. Right, and, and is it after church? Usually we have done it after yeah. church, but I, I don't think that we are hard fast. But, you know, 9.30, anything earlier than 9.30 is absolutely a no for young families. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're just lucky to get, you know, and I'm still in that mode, right? Okay, 9.30 is still really challenging for me to be here. Reuben helps me be on time, right? Yeah. So anyway, um, so I would think after after service. And after service. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank All you. Right. You know you're lucky. I'm here at nine thirty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Heidi. Yes, teachers are always in demand, and there's always something we need, and you're gifted to have Heidi to help us with that effort. And have fun with it. And have fun with it. Who said that? <laughs> yes, absolutely. No, I keep thinking, we need Sunday school. Help the children. Yep. Well, aren't we all children of God? Exactly. Let's all have class. I'm working on that. Uh, okay, I wanted to give a shout out and a thanks to all those who did our yard to see that the, the playground is all cleaned up and de-weeded. So I don't know, I'm thinking, Ron who's not here, Dwayne okay. was here, and he was he and his wife both. And I think just prior to that, no, neither Ron nor uh, Sharon are here. But Ron was driving the tractor, and I think prior to that, many times I've gone out and found Sharon out there, knee deep in the garden, doing her weed. But anyway, I want to say thank you for the effort. It was really nice. Flowers, Al and Darlene, you're always there hiding. You know, if you want to hide, be in plain sight, right? <clears throat> the flowers are celebrating 17 years of wedded bliss. All right. I'll dispense with the usual comments. <laughs> I'm afraid to hear what they are. <laughs> you're afraid to hear them? Oh, 